I'm Ted Kaufman, Chairman of the Congressional Oversight Panel. I'm here to introduce our 30th and final oversight report on the Troubled Asset Relief Program. By statute, the panel will wind down after this month. As our work ends, it makes sense to recall where America stood when the panel and the TARP were created two and a half years ago. It was a frightening time. Stock market endured triple digit swings. Major financial institutions had collapsed. The economy was hemorrhaging jobs. Foreclosures were escalating with no end in sight. Ben Bernanke, the chairman of the Federal Reserve, has said we were on a course for a, quote, cataclysm that could have rivaled or surpassed the Great Depression, unquote. The good news is that America avoided depression. The TARP does not deserve full credit, but it provided critical support at a moment of profound uncertainty. It worked in part by injecting cash into banks, but more significantly, by demonstrating to markets that the United States would take radical steps to prevent the collapse of its financial system. Further good news is that the TARP's projected costs have fallen sharply. The Congressional Budget Office now believes that taxpayers will lose about $25 billion, not an insignificant sum, but far less than the $356 billion initially estimated. Treasury deserves particular credit for lowering costs through its careful restructuring of AIG, Chrysler, and GM. But there's bad news, too. One reason why the TARP has saved money is that its efforts to prevent foreclosures have barely gotten off the ground. Its main foreclosure mitigation program, which is expected to keep 4 million homeowners in their homes, is now on track to help fewer than 800,000. Put another way, the TARP will cost less than expected in part because it will accomplish far less than envisioned for America's homeowners. Another troublesome aspect of the TARP's legacy is that it created profound moral hazard. That is, it led too big to fail banks to believe that they can take outsized risks, expecting taxpayers to pick up the tab in the event of a crisis. The TARP also created deep stigma, a sense among the public that policymakers cared far more about bailing out Wall Street than about stopping the bleeding on Main Street. Let me be perfectly clear. Some degree of moral hazard and stigma were essentially baked into any rescue. You cannot bail out too big to fail banks or auto manufacturers without distorting markets. You cannot save huge businesses from their own mistakes without creating public anger. The question we must ask is, did Treasury do everything possible to rein in those problems? The answer, unfortunately, is no. In order to prevent moral hazards and stigma, governments must take bailouts as unpleasant for the recipients as they are for the taxpayers footing the bill. Treasury could have required banks to fire their top management or use TARP money only for specific purposes, such as new lending. Shareholders could have been wiped out. But Treasury took a different approach with the banks, allowing executives to stay in place and shareholders to maintain significant ownership. The implication was that Wall Street banks and bankers could retain their profits in boom years but shift their losses to taxpayers during a bust. To Treasury's credit, it was much tougher on the auto industry. Yet these rescues are troublesome for other reasons. They send a message that the government's too big to fail guarantee extends beyond banks and to any company that is large and significant enough to the U.S. economy. The resulting moral hazard will infect our economy for years. Finally, as the Congressional Oversight Panel draws to a close, I want to say a few words about the importance of oversight itself. Between the panel's efforts and those of SIGTARP, GAO, and other public and private bodies, the TARP has become one of the most thoroughly scrutinized government programs in history. Scrutiny inevitably invites criticism in the case of the TARP, a program born out of an ugly necessity that criticism was always likely to be harsh. But there can be no question that oversight has improved the TARP and increased taxpayer returns. For example, in July 2009, the panel reported that Treasury appeared to be undervaluing TARP investments called warrants. Due in part to pressure generated by our work, Treasury changed its approach and its return increased dramatically. In total, warrant sales produced $8.6 billion. That's just one example. Oversight has strengthened the TARP in many other ways, too. Thus, an enduring lesson is that extraordinary government programs require extraordinary oversight. Careful, skeptical review of the government's actions, even when the review is uncomfortable, is an indispensable step toward preserving the public trust and ensuring the effective use of taxpayer money. 
You can read all of our reports and offer your own views by visiting our website, cop.senate.gov.